morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another week in the stock market. Oh my God, we are going to have a very, very interesting week ahead, especially after all of the geopolitical uh, new developments, let's say, uh, all of the uh, the potential escalation news uh, that has happened over this past weekend. So I hope you guys are excited. This is going to be a crazy week. I mean, those of you guys uh, that are in the Swing Kings course, you guys have the tickers that I'm watching for. We're going to be able to identify probably a couple of more uh, throughout the week. But again, the name of the game for this week is going to be being a lot more defensive uh, than we typically would just because of all of the additional variables that are getting thrown into the market. But team, it is that time of day. Say good morning to somebody in the live chat. If you guys would like to say good morning to me as well, I would love to see some good mornings in here. Let's do a little bit of a roll call, see who's in here. If anybody is new to the stream, make sure you guys make yourselves known as well. I would love to welcome you guys. We have a couple of cool announcements here. I know I mentioned something that I wanted to start uh, last week. I did some research on it. Um, and I'm actually really, really, really excited for it. And I think you guys have really enjoyed kind of kind of that type of learning and things like that as well. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. The overnight strategy is absolutely printing today. Uh, I mean, markets up what? 0.83%, 42 points, knowing nothing about the market. I mean, what is that? Uh, every 10 points is what? Thousand bucks? No, every 10 points is 500. Sorry, it's it was a long weekend, guys. It was a long, long, long weekend. I fell asleep a little early last night. I accidentally woke up at like seven and thought it was this morning. So but let's do our roll call here. Let's see who we got. We got Samuel Thos, Dr. Bob Reaper, Daily Taylor, Ash, Tor, Wreck It Ralph, Eddie, Starsky, Caesar, Christopher, Angel, Benjamin, Armac, Litchfield, uh, Mike T. What is going on, everybody? How we doing? How we doing? Morning, gang. What's up, team? How we doing? So all right, let's talk about a couple of the things that happened over the weekend. Um, you guys all know I ran, uh, kind of came in with those uh, those drone strikes against, I mean, it's just news. YouTube, don't be mad. I'm talking about the news. Uh, Iran had those uh, drone strikes against Israel. They stopped that attack. It looked like a lot of those missiles were intercepted. Um, there was a lot of talk about retaliation from Israel. And again, if you think about the escalation of the conflict in the Middle East, uh, kind of with what's been going on also uh, with Russia and Ukraine. To me right now, I kind of want to write a thread about this. I don't necessarily, it, like, even if these conflicts all start to escalate, I don't think we're going to have World War III. It's too dangerous. And what I mean by that is you're not going to have, like, a bunch of different countries like NATO and uh, going against another group of different countries. But what you will potentially have is a world at war where you'll see a lot of these different conflicts happening all at the same time, which can go into some of the theories that I've been kind of going through with you guys about how the United States is going to then refinance this debt. Now, yields this morning as well. TLT is down. Yields are up. One of the reasons for that is this continued move to the upside in USD JPY. Now, we're going to make probably a, another one of those kind of long drawn out Twitter threads on this as well. I think you guys have really enjoyed those. I posted one uh, this past weekend that I think a lot of you guys really enjoyed. I want to post a lot more things like that for you. I think that's very beneficial for everybody to, again, there's a lot of things that I think about and consider that we talk about on the streams and, and some of the things I just don't, but they're very, very, very helpful in understanding what is actually going on in the broader economy and how it affects markets. Let's see here. Jerome. Yeah. Powell is on Powell is on the schedule for this week as well. And again, team, as always, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button on the way in here, helps out a whole lot getting these streams out to some more people. Um, again, cost you nothing to do. It helps me out a whole lot by just going down and hitting that like button. If you guys do enjoy these streams as well, it makes it a lot easier for you guys to come back as well with the way the YouTube algorithm works. So what do we have this morning here? We've got Raytheon bouncing up off of that 10. So I actually um ended up in the afternoon on friday taking a little position in raytheon nothing crazy um but i did try to get it off of this 10 ema here which i did get uh so these are probably going to look relatively good at open uh micron is another one that i'm very interested in here too i mean you guys can see all these price alerts that i have in here on this thing uh if you look at what is it smh yeah smh is the vanex semiconductor etf i mean this thing has looked relatively good uh, over the last few weeks here for the way that we like to approach the market. So again, all of the other semis, I mean, you're seeing NVIDIA, AMD, a lot of the other ones having some issues, but the overall sector uh, is looking like it's getting that nice period of consolidation and could easily break to the upside there. So that'll be another interesting one to watch. 
Bitcoin, I'm also interested in. So I actually, I technically have like a short on Bitcoin, but it's through in uh, a three times levered ETF, which I got on Friday afternoon up in here. So that is nicely in the green. Um, I was sitting at the bar on uh, Saturday and we saw all of this thing, all of this movement to the downside. And I was sitting here like, oh man, I kind of just wish I shorted Bitcoin because I would have been able to take my profits right at this level down in here. But again, I can't win them all. So this one's still going to be relatively green uh, at open here as well. I've got a couple of other things kicking around that we can talk about there as well. Uh, you get a conflict. You get a conflict. Yeah. Uh, Wells Fargo looks good on the weekly and they just beat earnings. What do you think? Uh, Wells Fargo, didn't they sell off on earnings or did they end up popping? I thought they sold off. Uh, there's a little volatility on earnings. Uh, Goldman Sachs this morning reported and they blew it out of the water. So their sales and trading division did very well. Uh, I believe they beat on almost every single metric there. Uh, and they're up about 3.73% in the pre-market, uh, which again, could help out the banking sector a little bit, especially with JP Morgan on Friday releasing their earnings. Uh, in having some significant issues here. I mean, they were they got absolutely manhandled down six and a half percent there. So I think it was uh, lending uh, lending income that they missed on, and and that was what was spooking the market here with J.P. Morgan. And then you also have Jamie Dimon coming out and being a little bit of a hawk. Uh, what I and again for those of you guys that are new, what I essentially mean by that is he's not very he doesn't have a very positive outlook uh, on the overall economy over the next let's say couple of quarters here. And if that's his view, he's definitely going to talk about that in the earnings reports. But we do have a little announcement today, nothing crazy, but I think you guys are really going to like this one and find just an immense amount of value for for what I want to do for you guys next. Um, I think this is going to be really cool. Um, I think especially the the interest uh, that I've seen in a lot of the threads and kind of the, the different types of things that we talk about here, and especially with the interest that we saw in the mastermind, I think this is going to be really cool. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be looking interesting this week, team. Very interesting. The overnight strategy, again, that video is out there for free. On um, What is this? What do I have on here? Why did I have that? I don't even know why that's there. That's weird. What the thing? I didn't even realize that. I might have just been screwing around on Friday just looking for stuff, but I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. So, yeah, I think we actually have the ability here. What's this? 5149. That might be too big of a range here, but we still could get a nasty day trade setup from the uh, from the strategy from the day trading mastery course. I mean, that thing printed last week. You guys saw that trade on Monday. Got stopped out on one. I think it was here. Yeah, it was here. So this is the one I got stopped on. This is the one that we drilled. I mean, it doesn't look very big, but that was like a really, really nice bottom tick. Comes up, hits first TP, chops around all day. And then I sold that one near close, but market really bouncing hard off of this. I mean, the uh, the Israeli stock exchange, I believe, yesterday finished relatively green too so um i think what a lot of people are doing uh with this uh potential geopolitical and, and like war escalation is i think they're viewing it a little bit incorrectly i think they're viewing it as like an escalation of the conflict and not necessarily a like a retaliatory warning not a warning but um uh hey please don't do that to us again i i don't i uh, we're looking at this from how it's going to affect markets if you guys want to have uh opinions on what the actual conflicts that are going on you guys can go to a different channel i do think though from what i see here and kind of how everything's looking uh especially with what the united states needs to do to essentially reissue 7.6 trillion dollars of debt uh throughout basically the next year there's something else interesting happening that i think people are just failing to realize uh which we can make another thread and i'll do a whole write-up on that one for you guys as well Saw you on TikTok. What's up, man? How you doing? So if you could please help me recover your two previous days capital. I'm so glad. Oh, my. All right, man. I mean, guys, it, it, trading's a long-term game. Trading is a long-term game. If you're trying to come into the market and think, ooh, I'm going to make 1% of that. No. Trading is not fixed income. Trading is not a fixed income instrument. You have to have a long-term vision. I could go two, three, four weeks without taking a trade if it doesn't fit the setup. So, Uxama, if you're going to come in here in the market today and be like, ooh, I'm going to try and make back the losses that I made last week. That's not, again, 
it, you, everybody loves to think about trading the wrong way. They think about it on a day-to-day -day basis, not a year-over-year -year basis, which is what you need to do. Um, and that's, again, why everybody like has so much success with the way that I teach things. Because once you can understand the data and the, and the actual potential outcomes over time of what you're actually trading, the outcome of one individual trade becomes meaningless. And it, 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 it eliminates all of the beginner risk management and psychological mistakes, which again, right now is what you're, uh, sorry, but it's the, you kind of need to hear the harsh, that's what you're doing. You're making a psychological mistake and saying, I want to make back this because of how you feel. That's not trading. That's not what it is. You're a beginner, so that's why. That's fine. That's fine. Are you doing live trades as well? Well, I mean, that's illegal. Sometimes I'll enter things on the stream, but I'm never going to come out here and say, oh, I'm doing this. This is it right here. No. Uh, again, I'm all about making sure that you guys are going to be completely self-sufficient in the market. Everybody's always asking me for like trade alerts. Tell me that. No, no. You cannot take two weeks. No trading while sitting on the computer. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. And you have to be comfortable doing that. See, here's the other thing too. I, I talk about this a lot. Um, what people love to do, and it's not necessarily their fault. It's the way that like most people view things. Um, everybody has gone to school at some point. They've had a job. There are certain tasks that you need to accomplish every single day when you go to school uh, or you're at a job in order to either maintain your employment or see, this is why I really want to start doing this other the this new thing I have for you guys too. It's just like, uh, we'll get there though. We'll get there. We'll make that announcement a little bit, but um, you have a certain amount of tasks that you need to accomplish every single day. And if you don't, well, you're either not going to get the grades that you want. You're not going to, you don't think you're going to be able to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish or in the workplace. I mean, you're not going to be able to maintain your employment status. Trading is not that most of the time in the market, the best decision is to not do anything. And that's what people fail to realize. They approach the market and they feel unproductive if they don't see an opportunity that day. But that is sometimes the most productive thing that you can do. Really like the way you're talking and respond to our comment. Thanks, man. I mean, again, I talk about things way differently than anybody else that you're going to see talk about them. Let's see. I thought all you have to say is this is for educational purpose only. Do not trade this and you can't get in trouble. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> Let's see. And then people are going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're wrong, wrong. I'll be like, okay, well, I'll call my people at the SEC and we can talk to them about it. <laughs> like, okay, we can do that. We can do that too. I'll call one of the lawyers. Okay. They're like, no, I can do this. It's like, oh, cool. Go for it. See what happens. STV will teach you to fish. I will. I will. Also, what I want to talk about here too is Mara. Mara, this, everything that's happening with Mara right now is, is going exactly to plan. Remember what we did last time with this giant Mara trade that we had? Um, again, I didn't hit this full move. I ended up selling my options at the second take profit for about 600%, which is still great. Um, but ev this move that we mapped out here coming down through the launch zone, coming back up into it and then breaking back out to the upside, we're seeing a very similar thing happen. And I've been talking about this for a few weeks that I want to see Mara down into at least the 15 range. We were chopping around up here at 21, all, all, all those price levels. And I just, you guys heard me say, I'm not interested in it above these levels in here. I wanted to sell off a lot more. And I also think that post having uh mara is going to get a little bit of a sell-off as well but as the dust settles you can get that trend shift consolidation and we can have again a three for three just dirty mare this one was one of the this was the 1200 percent mara trade so 1200 percent. this one if i held it would have been a lot more um and i really wish i just traded the shares on this one but again that's why i traded the acb shares two weeks ago instead of the options here um this one was absolutely filthy so we're gonna see if we can hunt some more things like that this week ES is going even higher. Those of you guys that took advantage of the overnight strategy video, that's, again, out there for free on my YouTube. You guys are crushing it. Uh, from your thought, I, can you buy Bitcoin in spot? This is the time or not. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. And no, I don't trade for it. You don't even know it's illegal? <laughs> yeah, dude. You can't do that. 
Um, I mean, you can, so here's what I would say about Bitcoin. You, and I say this to everybody, whether it's to a, uh, people that manage billions of dollars, whether it's to people like that are like people that I know that are my age. And they ask me these questions. I, I respond to always with the same thing. They always ask me, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? And I just respond with, do you think that inflation is going to slow down or not? There are a couple of different uh, asset classes that can over time benefit from all of these inflationary pressures that I think we're going to continue to see in the market. Um, the only, ooh, I mean, this is, we, it's going to get a little involved. We, we'd have to talk about this for like the next hour. Um, but we talked, I think, about this last week about how large money has really given us that flashing signal that they do not believe, they think the Fed is lost. And we talked about this in the free newsletter yesterday, which is a, it's a little taste of what we're going to be doing with this next thing that I've got for you guys. But they think the Fed is lost. Now, if they think the inflationary pressures are out in the market to stay, and they're going to be operating in the equity market, commodity market, and the bond market, uh, what are they then going to do? Well, they're going to buy assets that benefit from these inflationary pressures, oil, gold, silver, all of those different things. And what have we seen? Well, oil stocks and oil in general has gone almost vertical over the last few weeks. Silver, you guys saw me take that. I mean, I saw it at the height of 600 something percent, but I ended up selling the rest of that position at 535%. Like you have to think about what is large money telling you right now about what's happening in the overall market? Well, they're telling you that they do not, the Fed's credibility is basically gone. It's zilch, zero. I don't think anybody in their right mind right now is going to expect the Fed to be able to get down to that 2% inflation target. I don't. I don't think anybody who, who has a good grasp on all of these different data points and factors and where we're headed actually believes that. Now, that creates a really interesting problem for markets. We, we, and we're going to keep talking about this. Like that $7.6 trillion of debt that needs to get refinanced. Not refinanced, reissued. I think that's a better term for it because um, you're not technically refinancing. Think about it like this. Let's say I have a credit card. And I, and I have a $1,000 of, of uh, credit card debt on it. Let's say that that debt is 2%. And I have no money. Let's just say I have zero other money. But for some reason, I can go get another credit card. So I can do a cash advance on that credit card for $1,000 and pay off that prior credit card debt. So I give the $1,000 back. So when I say 1000 here, think $7.6 trillion. Okay. But that new credit card comes with, let's say, instead of 2% interest on the old loan, 4% interest. Well, in the case of the United States government, you're going to basically double the interest expense. Might even be, depending on where rates are and where this new kind of, not theory, but my new idea of where things are, are going. You could double the interest expense. You also have Medicare, Social Security, defense spending, all of those things as well. Now, if the tax revenues from the government does not continue to go up significantly, well, in about seven years, uh, our tax revenues are not going to be able to pay for the interest expense and all of those, let's say, fixed cost uh, things that the government has to pay for every year. What happens then? They inflate the debt away. They print more money. So inflation, to me, is, is going to happen regardless. Now, now, what I would also want to talk about with you guys, too, is... Think about this. Think about this. We've been talking about that concept for a while, right? Did anybody watch the All In podcast from this past weekend? Did anybody watch? If you haven't, go watch the first 20 minutes. Those are big money players. What did they say? I watched, I was listening to it while I was doing some stuff yesterday and I, we're right on it, guys. We are we are right on it. They're catching on. I mean, you can you can kind of tell where things are headed. You did, yeah. See, it was the it was the that those first that first twenty minutes of that podcast, perfect. Uh, do I have a course? Yeah, I mean, we can mention the courses right now. I've got the uh, the uh, the day trading mastery course and the swing kings course. Uh, if you guys want both of them, you guys want to take that step in the right direction, finally give yourselves a fighting chance in the market. Uh, if you get both, it's fifty percent off or buy one get one free. So there you guys go there. Oh my God, we're almost at 50 likes already, all in podcast. Yeah, you guys should definitely be listening to that one. Also, go watch uh, Dollar Endgame by Peruvian Bull. We've been talking about that one a bunch. But yeah, I got a little bit of an announcement for you guys here. I think, uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I think this is going to be beneficial for everybody here. 
Um, and I absolutely love doing this stuff as well. Like it's, it, I love being able to go out and, and kind of uh, do, do more deeper dives. And we hinted at it last week a little bit. Uh, what did we have over here? I think it was Mara we were looking at. Mara, where's uh, Micron? Micron's one that I, I got a little, little something, something. I don't want to see what happens with this. Yeah, it's up 1.25%. That's good. Bitcoin coming back up a little. This is on the hourly. I mean, you're just kind of trending up here. If you break this 10 and start nuking, that could be an interesting one too. Dollar end game is so good. Hold it. What does fate mean? Oh, it's uh Ralph. What was it? It's um flexible. It's flexible something interest. Um flexible average. I forget what it is. It's like a different way at looking at rates. Flexible average inflation targeting. That's what it is. Flexible average inflation targeting. Yeah, there we go. So it wasn't interest. It was inflation. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. This is going to look good this morning. People are going to get so mad at me if I post screenshots of RTX calls. <laughs> it's the setup is great, man. I mean, the setup was there. The setup was right there. So, yeah, I mean, you guys have access to courses there. The 50% off deal is there. It's there to stay. I'm not here to, to overcharge you guys on stuff. Um, if you guys want both of them and you guys want to hop in there and get that again, once you guys see it, you can't unsee it. And then everybody in here too, that is, that is taking advantage of all those educational programs. Uh, you guys want to let people know in the live chat, what your thoughts and what your experiences have been like in them. Um, I think, I think that would be very beneficial for the people that are on the fence. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it today. I mean, we got nine minutes until market open here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. My phone is going nuts. What date is today? What date is today? 15. All right, cool. Oh, happy uh, happy tax day, ladies and gentlemen. Happy tax day. Where's USD JPY right now? The only time that I have ever wanted to open up a Forex account was when I saw this. <laughs> oh, dude, I wanted it so bad. We, I mean, we could have just went puts on TLT, which is which in hindsight would have we we talked about that so much. The inverse relationship between TLT and USD JPY. Um, that is another one of those uh, write ups that I want to do for you guys. But I mean, this thing is ripping. I mean, the break here above one fifty one ninety six, running up. Dude, that's like the only time that I've ever been like, I want to trade Forex. That's it. Uh, the knowledge I learned from VIX turned into positive trades, which funds my attorney bills to get your son back. David, wow, man, that's a tough situation to be in. Hopefully you get him back, man. Uh, thanks, VIX. Oh, and also learned enough from VIX. Whoa, whoa, this is great. <laughs> learned enough from VIX to graduate with a 3.8 GPA and to start your MBA. David, that is phenomenal, man. Congratulations. Congratulations, man. I mean, yeah, you guys are going to learn a lot on these streams. And a lot from what we have coming up next. We'll probably talk about that a little bit after market open. Um, I'm super excited for it, man. I've been talking to Ralph. But it's the thing that we've been talking about a little bit. I'm really excited for that. Tesla layoffs. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Jag was talking about that on Twitter um, for a while ago. He brought that tweet back. And he was like, well, the, one of the reasons why Tesla hasn't hasn't benefited as much as the other uh, Mag 7, Magnific uh, Magnificent 7, uh, is that they didn't really participate in the mass layoff waves that these other companies did. Now they're starting. I've told you guys a lot that I think there's going to be a really, really good opportunity on Tesla at some point this year. Uh, is it now? I don't necessarily think so. We can kind of come over here and take a look at Tesla's chart on the daily. Uh, give us a little picture of what I'm looking at. So I need to see that trend shift, which you have, again, you have yet another internal trend shift here on Tesla. Um, but this is not going to be enough for me. I would really love us to be above the weekly, uh, the weekly ten here in order, in order for me to really want to get that set up. So maybe I don't get the first one, but if we see something like uh, RKT on Tesla, I mean, you guys know the uh, the nasty RKT trades that we've been on, but something like this, where it's been hated by the market, you get that initial trend shift here, you get that pop. Well, again, you can get that stair stepping right in here and get that second one. Paying quarterly and tax day hurts so much. Yeah, man. Taxes. 
I hate it. I hate it. It's okay. But that's awesome, David. Congratulations. Uh, how's Raytheon? That's good. I mean, I might ditch a little bit of it at open. They're weekly, so I mean, I would I, ideally I want to get above 102, but we'll see. Are we getting data on the belt? We shouldn't be. What data is it? Where is it? There we go. No, I don't see anything. We got business inventories at 10, home builder confidence index at 10. Uh, we got a lot of housing data coming out this week. Powell speaking at 1.15 p.m. tomorrow. I don't have the details on that yet, but that'll be interesting. Uh, we also have earnings season kicking out in full swing now. I believe Netflix is on uh, Thursday. That will be very interesting. And I think next week is the big uh, is the big earnings week. I have to take a look back in on that one, though. I think that's the big one. TLT getting hammered. That USD JPY move is nuts. Uh, Micron up a percent. I mean, that's decent. It's nothing crazy, though. What do you got, four minutes? Yeah, Mondays are just typically slow on data. Uh, we did get, what, retail sales, though, this morning that, I mean, it's pushing out uh, rate cut expectations. So not really, not really kind of seeing what the market's doing here. But, I mean, we can take a look at these. Uh, see what the Fed watch tool is saying, especially for June. That was about 20%. Yeah, back down at 18% here for the rate cut in June, July. Uh, so if you guys, uh, this is where uh, Mr. Uh, the President of the United States is sitting right now with his expectations. So he's uh, he's kind of taken the, uh, the, the less probable bet here that we get a rate cut in July. The market in general is pricing in about a 56% probability that we do not cut rates in July. Going into December, so through the end of the year, what are the expectations sitting at? So right now, they're giving us about one to one and a half. Uh, like that, that's what the market is pricing in one to one and a half rate cuts uh, for this year. Now, if the inflation data remains hot, uh, you you see uh, unemployment staying where it is or even coming down. You see positive GDP growth. I mean, we're not going to be getting those cuts. He's a genius. Who? Who? The volatility trigger on spot? Are you talking about like gamma levels? I don't know. Ralph might know the gamma levels. Oh, oh, who are you talking about, Dave? Jag? That dude's real smart. Oh, El Presidente. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, you guys saw that tweet. Yeah, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter yet, you absolutely should be as well. We're going to really start taking Twitter a uh, lot more seriously coming in here too. So again, uh, my Twitter is short the VIX one If you guys aren't on there yet, toss a follow. You're going to learn a lot over there as well. All right. Minute 30 until the ding ding. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my computer's being a little slow today. Micron up a percent. That's good. What are what are the other things looking like too? All right. All right, team. Ooh, and again, as we're headed into market open, if you guys haven't hit the like button already, if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, that's all I ask for around here. Uh, just helps out a whole lot getting these streams out to some more people so that we can actually give people fighting chances in the market to understand things. Um there's a lot of nonsense out there, especially in the uh, let's let's I mean, more so in like the trading space. But yeah, I mean. Good morning, everybody late to the party. Good morning, Jay. How you doing? Oh, I'm going to need some more water this morning at some point. All right. 40 seconds. Here we go. Whew, this weekend was fun. This weekend was fun, man. A little a little rough on the sleep, but it's a good weekend. Good weekend. Do you guys see my friend on my Instagram story? That the he's, We did the hot dog thing, and he's just dipping hot dogs in Guinness? Oh, my God. That was way, it was way too early for that. I was like, it's 6 o'clock. I was like, oh, well, this is going to go interestingly this weekend. All right, RTX, I want to see how that opens. We got 10 seconds here. 
is Biddy better options or shares? Uh, it's a three times levered ETF. So, what do you think? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Market is open. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, RTXs are up 85%. Uh, they're spready. I want to see what's going to happen with that, though. 95% now? Yeah, I'm probably going to scale this. I'm going to see if I can steal a little. Oh, whoa, these are up big. Oh, yeah, order filled. That's good. What did I get those at? Uh, about 100% there. I think that was over 100 Whoa, I stole those. Oh, my God. Oh, I stole those. Yeah. Well, I'm up nicely today here so far. Yeah, I'm actually not a fan of this. I kind of want to get out of this one. Oh. Yeah, that's chill. All right. Lowered the risk on that. Yeah, we're looking good. Yeah, looking good here. All right. So I just wanted to ditch the RTXs there. Those are free. Um, see what happens with those throughout the rest of the week. Uh, took some risk off on the microns. I mean, it just I thought we were going to get a little bit more of a pop on that, just especially with um, with the market doing what it did. Didn't really get that. It still looks great. So this is still going to be a watch for me this week. I had it from Friday. Mara, I want to see, obviously, this thing get a lot lower. RTXs, nice win on that one to start off the week uh i am up so from all the things that i have the rtx's i'm up about uh, like one point uh, it's flickering i'm up about two percent it's flickering though so we're gonna see what happens across the board here see what we get today where's uh where's bitcoin how's that doing uh i want the coinbase chart that's what I, all my alerts are on that's moving up a little I kind of want to book the win on that too. I don't know. Well, I'm going to leave that one for a bit. I'll leave that one for a bit. See what happens. Uh, what else? TLT getting hammered. Anything coming through the news feed, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see. I think so. No, it's just some Trump stuff. On the court cases. That's all I see. You're tempted to buy Mara start, shares to start to build a little position. Well, th okay. So hold on now. What do you, okay. So after the halving, you have to understand that the rewards go down. Um, Cause remember that's the, that's the point of the halving. The, the rewards that these miners are going to get are going to get cut in half. So in order for them to make this make sense, Bitcoin has to be trading at much higher prices. The margin has to be a lot higher for them in order to continue making a significant amount of money. So if you start to see Bitcoin uh, after the halving or, or continue this that little sell off that we've seen on it, well then those those um, those miners are going to have a little bit of a problem. But again, it's your money; you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, I wow, I stole those Raytheons. Jeez, that was nice of them. Yeah, so let me actually think. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't over 100%. It was really close, though. It was very close. It was just under 100% on the uh, on the Raytheon there. So that's good. That's a nice little win to start off the week. Those are now not up as much. The, the remaining position that I have on it is only up about 50%, but that's fine. Booking the win. Uh, Bitcoin halving is the 20th of April. Well, remember it's an estimate. So yes, that's when the projections are of when the halving is actually going to happen. Um, but again, it's not locked in. It's probably going to happen right around that. If, if people on Twitter are saying, yes, this is when it's going to happen, then probably it will. Um, but it has to do, remember with the amount of Bitcoin that's being mined. Uh, Bitcoin selling off a little here. Yeah. Wow, I'm up nicely to start off the week. That's great, man. That's great. That's solid. Uh, what else? What else do we have that we got to look for, team? Oh, you guys want to do that little announcement here quickly before we uh, before we continue? Exxon position nearly up 40%. There you go, Reaper. Yep, that was a great one from last week, too, with those oil plays. Where's Oxy this morning? Because Oxy actually looked a little bit better than Exxon, especially on Friday. 
eh, just kind of chop it around. You guys nailed this one, though. I mean, Friday when we saw Oxy up at those highs, you guys were making that free. Dude, that was amazing. Congratulations to everybody. So here is, yeah, let's do it now. Let's do it now. So I think that you guys have kind of seen um, over the past couple of months here that we've been really talking a lot more uh, and putting more of a heavy emphasis on the education that I, that I really want you guys to understand. We talk about it on the streams. I've started posting a lot more of those Twitter threads that I think a lot of you guys do enjoy. So here's what I want to do. I know that we have the free newsletter, and that's going to stay. Uh, we're going to keep that newsletter free. But what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be creating um, a new section on, I believe I can do it on Teachable, and I'm going to try to get this out for you guys this weekend. And what we're going to be doing is these very in-depth deep dives into uh, events that are currently happening, like you guys all saw that uh, that Twitter thread I posted this past weekend. That's an example of it. Kind of what we talked about in um, on uh, uh, in the newsletter as well. That's going to be what we're doing. But they're going to be way more in depth. Now, in addition to that, when we talk about those new macro developments, my thoughts, my insights into where we're able to. Uh, kind of just give better pictures of what's actually happening out in the market. We're also going to be talking about historical events and breaking them down for you guys, because if you can understand history, you can understand a lot of uh, a lot more of these present events a lot more. But I also want to add into this as well. I mean, we're going to we're going to create like the amount of value that's going to be in this is ridiculous. Um, there's also I want to do some write ups on specific companies for you guys, too. Not not saying buy or sell, none of that, obviously, but giving you guys a better picture of things that I find interesting and that you guys might find interesting too, that you guys could do a little bit of deeper dives into. We're probably going to have between five or six of these in-depth write-ups per month. Um, and I, I think it's going to be what, like 10, it's probably going to be 10 to 15 bucks a month if you guys want to hop in for that. I want it to be accessible to everybody. Um, to make sure that that if the, those of you guys that are really eager to learn and step it up, and I want to step it up for you guys too. Because we talk a lot about these types of things on the streams. Um, but if, remember, when I get to sit down, and, and you guys have seen it kind of in the mastermind as well, when I get to sit down and really go through the data, and I'm not just spitballing on the streams, um, the amount of knowledge that you guys are able to gain is very significant. So that's what I'm planning on doing for you guys. I think it's probably going to be, I'm going to do my best to get it released uh, for you guys this weekend. And then our first write-up is probably going to be the following weekend. And it's going to be first sent out uh, the link to hop in. I mean, I'm going to send it to all you guys that have already been in all the courses and also on the free newsletter that I'm going to continue doing for you guys every week uh, as well. So that's what we're looking at there. I, I think that's completely fair. For everybody, I think I think you guys are going to find a lot of value in that as well. And, and I can't wait to see your guys' continued growth uh, over the next couple of months when we start really doing this with you guys. I think uh, you guys know, again, when I say, um, and I've hinted at this a lot, I'm not going to be able to do uh, what we've been doing kind of on this uh, on the streams here forever. Um, I have a lot of other work things I do. There's some interesting things and developments that we're going to have coming towards, uh, towards the later part of this year. Um, but that new that type of thing we can keep doing forever and i think is really going to be beneficial to everybody um so again that's kind of why i'm saying like if you guys want to follow me on twitter you're going to get a little bit of a taste uh of what we're going to be doing in there but i hope you guys are excited for that because i am i like i can't wait to get these out for you guys they like their two percent and their dividends well i know i know most people do AMC going all the time. I say LG. I don't think so about that one, buddy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sitting up about 2% on the day here. Uh, for, oh, the, the Bitcoin short. I mean, the shares that I have on that thing are up 2%. But remember, it's, it's it, when I take shares, it's bigger size. So, I mean, that's doing pretty good. Um, that is actually doing relatively good, too. That other thing I have is flat. But I would expect that to be a little bit more in the red let me see if i can actually ditch i kind of want to ditch the rest of the raytheons i don't really need it you gonna know, let me do that yep order filled out of the raytheon so good trade there i mean nothing crazy it's gonna be a lot uh, i think it's gonna be few and far between uh but again i'm fine with taking those base hits
so yeah make sure you guys are following me on twitter short the vix one we're gonna get that going for you guys so let's see what we can get here i mean bitcoin's just hanging right around 60 66k it just flashed under it es is coming down a little but it's just whipping around we do have data coming out in about 20 minutes here ladies and gentlemen uh what are we getting we are going to be getting i think it's uh sent no business inventories home builder confidence index is going to be a big one so costco went yeah that was the one from oh i didn't even look at that one this morning how's costco looking because that was one from the uh the swing kings watch list for you guys this weekend yep there it goes there she goes yep there you guys go that one's not bad. All right, guys, I got to run and grab water really quickly. So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button on the way, it's going to take me like two seconds. I just got to refill, uh, refill my cup with water. I'm still very dehydrated. So give me like two seconds. watch the short end what's uh hold on what's what are the twos doing twos are up everything's up though i mean the twos are up 1.57 what's like the 20 20 year yields are oh wait no that's the bond yeah i need the yields these yields are up. Uh, I have been doing your classes all weekend. Awesome, Joseph. You kept mentioning the ebook that's available. Where would you find it? So you go to shortthevix.info. Uh, that's also where you guys get that uh, that free newsletter that, again, we're going to be continuing to send out for you guys, even with that, uh, that new in-depth write-up um, service that I want to get out for you guys. Um, but yeah, you also get that new the newsletter from this past weekend, I think was one of, one of the best ones that I've kind of sent out to you guys um so yeah there you guys go and then also i know there's been some like weird like oh i'm not getting the emails things like that with this i mean there's not going to be that issue because what i want to do is be able to just post the actual the pdf to you guys so that you guys can just have them so it's not an email micron moving up as well i still have a little bit of that but <laughs> all right let's see yeah this one came down we're done on that i mean i'm out of the rate there. that was great off the 10 just comes back up that one easily could continue, especially if you start to see things heat up this week, but that was just meant for a quick flip. Starbucks bounce on the daily. That I, I mean, that's not going to be for us. That's I mean, obviously, yes, that's not going to be for us. Oh, is it hot out today? Yeah, it is. It's getting hot in here. I might have to turn the AC on. I don't want the camera shutting off. All right, let's see. All right. What do we got? How's the news feed looking? Uh, Goldman CEO says the market expects a soft landing, but the trajectory is still uncertain. That's fair. I mean... When he's not DJing, he's got some good insights. <laughs> or no, is he? Is Solomon still the CEO? Didn't they make him step down or something? Oh, no, it, it is Solomon. All right, cool. I thought there was something where they... Oh, no, I think they told him to stop DJing. I think that's what it was. I don't think they... They uh, also with uh, with Goldman Sachs earnings coming out today, I had to bring back that video. Do you guys remember I, I showed you guys that years ago? um that cartoon thing the 
the Goldman Sachs. Give me a job at the Goldman Sachs. But dude, I love those. Those are great. Uh, 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 what do we got? ES pushing. I mean, if it if it continues like this, I don't know if we'll get that uh that day trade setup today, but that's fine. I mean, less trades, more profits, guys. That's what you guys all got to be focused in on. Let's see. Yeah, Costco got that move. Is it still pushing? Yeah. Yeah. The old Goldman Sachs cartoon is hilarious. Dude, I love that one. There's more of them. There's one about quantitative easing too. That's really funny. What was the event he spawned? No, no, no. He, no, no, no. David Solomon will just be in the club DJing which is the wildest thing ever. He's the CEO of Goldman Sachs and the dude's out at like two in the morning DJing at clubs in New York City. Those of you, I mean, you guys, I don't know. The audience here is a little bit older. I don't know where you guys live, but like yeah, some people that I know will be out and they'll send me pictures of like, they used to like years ago. I'll be like, look, it's the CEO of Goldman. <laughs> Just like going crazy on the board. It's nuts. RTX coming back a little... I mean, I don't have that anymore, but where did Lockheed end up going? Because Lockheed actually had a little bit of a, like, the Raytheon setup was cleaner. Lockheed had some more juice on it, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was kind of where I wanted the the Lockheeds down in here, 451. I mean, a $7 move on that thing's pretty aggressive. So, I mean, I'm, I don't really want to do anything else with the defense names. He, how, how are utilities doing? XLU? Those don't look that good. What about NEE? That's like the biggest holding of it. Nah. What's his name? I don't know what his name is. David, just look up like David Solomon DJ. Like it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, man. I like EDM. He's one of us. <laughs> Dude is in control of one of the most powerful investment banks in history. Not even just in the world today. In history. He just loves to rip it at the DJ board. Good for him, man. If that's how he wants to, if he wants to blow off steam that way, there's a lot of other people in those positions that are doing it in a lot of different ways. So good on him. He wants to go DJ. Good for him. Uh, what else have we been looking at here? Uh, Facebook was one that I was interested in going into this week. Am I going to? No, this one actually has my, has my full undivided attention. Facebook. You want to you wanna play? I'll play with you, Facebook. Yeah, we're up uh, about 2.3% now. I've got another position that's kind of coming back here. Um, we got 13 minutes until Home Builder Confidence is going to come out as well. That's going to be interesting. So starting off the week strong, up about 2.2%. That's good, man. That's a great start to the week. But I can't wait to start writing these things for you guys. I mean, it's I've got a list of them, and and you guys are gonna see like the the kind of nerfed version on on Twitter, like the couple of tweet threads and 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 things like that. But the full big in depth write ups are gonna be uh, are gonna be available to those of you guys there too. Uh, nobody would think anything if he was playing racquetball at 2 a.m everybody has their own thing to blow a scene i love it I, I think it's awesome i think his board was very not happy with him though but whatever he doesn't care <laughs> he's like what i can't hear you i just we got music going all right let's see what we got here facebook's got my attention this week i kind of like it i just uh, remember what i said to you guys in the in kind of the the preface to the swing kings list this week like i'm just i'm looking to be a little bit more defensive like i do have the two the two share trade that I, that i have are effectively downside protection but since they're shares and kind of what we've been seeing i'm fine with holding those so the rtx i thought the micron was going to be a little bit better um i'm fine with taking shorter shorter dated things to not hedge upside but take advantage of those short-lived uh potential upside moves if you look at ES on the daily here, the S and P 500 futures, what do you notice? What do you notice about this? 
Think about trends. That's just clear trend shift right here. You're now seeing the overall market is now downtrending. Here's the one variable that we have to account for. We now have earning season coming up. So we have Netflix coming out later in the week. We have a couple of other big names. Uh, I believe next week is going to be the really big earnings week. I'd have to confirm that though. I just haven't looked. Um, but if we start to see, again, a lot of these companies are still trading at very, very high levels, very high levels, just in terms of valuations. And what you saw is going into the end of last year uh, with those earnings, you saw guidance being not cut, but the, the guidance that was coming out was they were kind of sandbagging it. And what I mean by that is they were putting their expectations a bit on the lower side so that when they can come out and potentially beat, Again, they're hedging themselves. So if, they're, if their revenues and their EPS and all of the different data points were not as good, well, then they may not have sold off as much. But if they really blow it out of the water, what do you see? This rip in the market. Now, you have to think about it almost in the exact opposite way going into this earnings season because you might have seen a lot of these, a lot of these uh, companies reporting guidance and saying, okay, or issuing guidance that can be a little bit higher than the market expected. If you have higher guidance and higher valuations, well, and the companies are coming in at expectations with their earnings numbers, that does not bode well for positive price action. Does that make sense? Again, also for any of you guys that are new to the stream, or even those of you guys that are that have been here for, for a little while, if I say anything that you guys are like, hmm, that doesn't, that, I'm not sure I understand that. Just ask. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to make sure I can answer your guys' questions. I don't know. I might just lock in this. Oh, my God. The yen. Oh, my God. USD JPY is ripping right now, I think. Uh, hold on. I want to leave Facebook. I kind of want this, man. Hold on. Because now I don't really have anything. Without... Oh, my God. I don't know. What are the premiums like on the Facebooks? Take like half a percent risk or something. I don't know. I just want to see what the premiums look like. Mm. I don't know about that. They're trying to steal a little on the option chain there. Good thing on Palantir is that, yeah, the, the exposure to the defense sector... Do you guys know how I feel about that one? I want it below 20. I want to buy more of that thing. I bet it's up today. Yeah. Things hanging around. It just cannot break these. It cannot get down below. It, just, it struggled so hard to get down sub 20. That's where I want to buy it. I mean, my average on it is in the 15s. So again, obviously I'm doing well on this one. I just... Uh, well, we can talk about SLV in a second. I just, I, I'm fine with increasing the average because I love this company for the long term. I just don't want to be buying it like well above 20. Uh, what's my take on SLV selling off with the market on Friday? War uncertainty. Well, let's think about it like this. There's a couple things. Goldman Sachs comes out and issues a pretty crazy price target for gold. You also see potential war escalation, but not really. Uh, you also have uh, a lot of those commodities very, very, very overextended also coming into tax day today. I think that was just a pullback, even though those daily candles look pretty bad. Um, if you looked at gold, silver, and CL, which is oil, even WTI, West, West Texas Intermediate, uh, that those price movements um we're not really f in line with escalation of conflict across the world now when you see what happened last weekend happen well the, again the market can be wrong in the short term in the long run it's probably going to be pretty correct because of the efficient market hypothesis but i would i would say that you were going into a friday you saw a crazy Crazy, crazy, crazy gains on it. I actually really had some good timing on those SLV cells. Dude, the, oh my, the TLT must be getting nuked. What's the 10 you're doing right now? USD JPY moving like that is really bad. Like that's not good. 10 years still pushing. It's up two point, it's at 4626. Jeez. Uh, why is the market up more than 10? What do you mean? Market up is not, market is not up more than 10%. Oh, oh, you're talking. Oh, I see what you're saying, Johnny. Not today, just in general. Um, 
Here's why. Here's one of the reasons why. And we've talked about this a little in the past and is, and is one of the things I want to dive a lot deeper uh, in one of those, those longer write-ups with you guys uh, with. But think about it like this. If nobody trusts the Fed to get inflation down to 2% and the long-run target is going to be higher than 2%, 2.5%, 3%, uh, or they go fake, flexible average uh, inflation targeting, well, then large money has to make a decision at where to put capital. They're going to buy things that benefit with inflation. So inflation being a tide that raises all boats, sort of. But the reasons for it are very important and in, in, in some that I want you guys to understand. If you're a large money investor, you have to put capital to work. You can't hold it, especially if your expectation is that inflation is going to continue. You literally just be saying, I want to lose money. My purchasing power is going to go down and you're fine with it, which none of them are. So what do they buy? Well, that's why we've seen uh, oil, gold, silver really starting to see some significant movements to the upside. But they're not going to put their entire portfolios in gold, silver, and oil. The long run expectation is that, all right, well, if you start to see these inflationary pressures continue, again, all of that money still has to go somewhere. Will they buy bonds? They're not buying bonds right now. And I, and I do think today uh, the reason why we are seeing yields go up so much and bond prices go down is it has a lot to do with uh, the yen devaluation and the inflation that you're seeing in Japan. Now, that is one, that is one of the, the write-ups that I want to make for you guys. And again, that one's just going to be on Twitter, um, but that's a really, really important one. We've seen that a lot. We've seen that a lot. The movements between USD, JPY, and the relationship to U.S. bonds. There's a lot of different reasons for it. Think about if, like, Japan. This is, okay, here's one. Well, think about if Japan has a lot of money in United States treasuries, and now uh, that that amount of money has gone up, so they're holding U.S. dollars. And versus the dollar, the yen is getting weaker. Well, they can then convert dollars back to yen, have more yen, and then go buy their own assets for basically a double discount. Right. So, so think about it like this. So I convert my domestic currency. Let's say I'm J Japanese. I convert my domestic currency. Where's USD JPY at? Let's say down, whatever it was down in here, 145. So $1 gets you 145 yen. I buy US treasuries and they're paying me in US dollars. So you get the benefit of getting the interest in dollars, but then your currency is also devaluing. So instead of converting back at one dollar to let's say one hundred forty eight yen, well, you're converting it back at one dollar to one hundred fifty four yen, but you also have more dollars than you did previously. Does that make sense? I, I hope I hope that makes sense to everybody. What do I say about Bitcoin? Uh, what do you mean, like right now? Oh, it's selling. I mean, I'm technically short Bitcoin. I'm just leaving that one there. How is that looking? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I have uh, I have BITI right now, the the inverse three x leverage Bitcoin ETF. Um. Oh wow, I'm up almost three percent of the day now. That other one is starting to go. I'm starting to get it. Yes. So that's the repatriation that everybody is talking about. So when the val so when one dollar is going to get you more yen, they might repatriate, which means taking the dollars that they now have and converting them back into yen. Is it the smartest thing to do though, as your currency is getting absolutely hammered? Not really. But if you're a large financial institution, think about uh what we just talked about. Um with what do you call it? Um, with uh, uh, all the institutions putting money into energy, oil, uh, and like silver and gold, they're not going to fully allocate to something. They're not going to say we're going to take a hundred a hundred percent allocation in treasuries. So they have to bring some of that money back, and they can buy. That's where I'm talking about. Like it's not a double discount, but if you're making money, you're generating more dollars. Your domestic currency is is going down in value so when you convert back you get more of your domestic currency well if they want to 
a little bit more capital in order to invest domestically, well, they can. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this BITI. I don't know. Um, I actually, what is this doing here? I kind of want to scale a little bit of it. Just take a little win on it. Just lock in a little bit and then throw some stops at break even and, and then just not care about it anymore. I want to see if they'll let me do this today, though. Nope. Nope. We're going to wait on that one. You put 800 bucks into Bitcoin? Well, good for you. Good for you. If you like that and that's and that's what you want to do, go for it. I, I actually do like... Um, here's the one thing that I don't like about Bitcoin, but I, it's also, a, it's not just Bitcoin. It would be if they were to, if they were to have like central bank digital currencies as well. Like there's a lot of debate right now where you're seeing people talking about like the gold movements where, oh, when are people going to start transacting in gold again? And to me, that's not feasible. They're not going to be transacting in gold, even with the gold notes. So here's what people are saying. They're like, oh, we want to go back to the gold standard. The problem with going back to the gold standards, you still have the same exact problems with the banking and financial institutions. I forget exactly what year it was, but it was in the 1900s where a lot of these banking institutions had reserves of gold at their banking institutions, but they were issuing more gold notes than what they actually had in gold reserves. So let's say they had $100 of gold reserves, but they, they would issue notes that had a claim to $200 of gold reserves. And once people found that out, it was just bank run city. So you keep, that's the same argument there too, but going back on the, on the Bitcoin argument, and let's just say, let's actually just say digital currencies in general. If you go into, let's say, one of the reasons that people are freaking out about this is one inflation, two, a uh, widespread conflict across the world. Well, if servers go down and the internet connections are, don't go well and cyber attacks start to happen, it's like, it doesn't matter how much digital currency that you have if the internet doesn't work. So then what do you do? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I again, I can I can get us to a certain spot, but uh, I don't have the solutions to everything, guys. If I did, I'd be the CEO of something. How's Facebook doing here? It's chilling. Did this break that that little hourly trend yet? Not yet. It's slowly getting there though. You think Mara is going to fulfill my midterm wish? I think it is too. I think we're spot on on Mara right now. And if that happens again, oh boy, I'm going to be screaming. Not on the street. Like maybe like for you guys in the Swing Kings list, you uh, or in the Swing Kings course, you guys are going to get that one first. I might even, if it starts to happen and set up, we'll get like a an emergency swing list, something like that. Yeah, uh, Mara under 16. I know. I want it to drop. If it can get back into the launch zone, dude, like we're going to have one of the best risk to reward setups ever. We've done it twice already. We've we've done we've done this move twice. This zone, boom. That this one I nailed for twelve hundred percent. This one I should have managed it better. Again, I'm not perfect. I don't want you guys sitting here thinking, "Oh my God, he's gonna execute his trades perfectly every single time." I'm not. I mean, I made six hundred percent on this. That's good. Um, I wish I traded the shares on it. Which again, going back to why I traded the shares on ACB, that's exactly why. But I mean, if we can get down to this launch zone here, 10, I, I, I think we're going to get to this 1280. I think that's where it's going to be. But who knows? If you see the halving go a little nuts and, and you start to see the miners starting to take hits, I mean, maybe it does go back down to here. But it doesn't matter because we, we would have to wait for it to bottom out shift trend anyway. So yes, getting down into these levels is good. Is it where I fully want it to be on the downside yet? No, it's not there yet. But it is something I'm watching. Bitcoin flickering around here. It's really trying to hold that that 10 EMA on the hourly. 1,200% wasn't perfect. No, 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 no. The first Mara trade was great execution. I held this thing all the way. 600% here. This is where I sold it. It was the, the reason why the execution wasn't good on, like, where why I say it wasn't really good on the Mara was because my contracts expired right in these days here. So I had to sell them anyway. So there was no, like, even if I wanted to hold for the rest of this move, I couldn't. My contracts were going to expire. I mean, they were deep in the money, but it wouldn't have, like.
And again, team, uh, we haven't really talked about this much today, but um, if you guys are interested in getting those data-driven uh, strategies there for you, I mean, the Day Trading Mastery course has been absolutely phenomenal for everybody. The Swing Kings course, where I'm sending out the watch list for you guys every single week, finding stocks that are about to explode before they do. Uh, that 50 percent off deal is still good. Um, it's buy one, get one free. Just select the all-in-one access, which I think that one just takes you right to. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys have seen it, the testimonials on the site, the testimonials on, uh, the Instagram, what people say in the live chat, if you guys want to give yourselves a fighting chance in the market, I mean, you guys kind of see here what, what we do and kind of how we operate. Um, you guys are interested in that. Go for it. We'd love to have you. But the one thing is though, is that you guys are slacking on the like button today. You guys are slacking really hard. Slacker. Let's see. Dude, this USD JPY move is freaking me out. <laughs> um, all right, I gotta turn the AC on real quick, guys. So let's see. Let's see. This is gonna take me two seconds. You guys hit that like button. We'll have a better day. I'm just kidding. I don't really care. <laughs> New here. Welcome, buddy. I'll be I'll be right back though. It's gonna take me two seconds. I just gotta turn the button on on the air conditioner. All righty. Uh, do I ever take different strikes and expirations on the same trade? Um, rarely, but I have. It's very rare I'll do that. The, the thing that I will do, though, is if I have shares and I really like it, I might, I, sometimes I'll sling some options on it. Oh, no. 99 cent only store announces bankruptcy sale of portfolio. I mean, we were talking about... Guys, it's... That the the ninety nine cent store phenomenon that we're seeing right now, I think we could talk about this a little bit more. Um, and this is going to be another one of the write ups that you guys are going to get in that new deep dive uh, service that I'm going to try to have out for you guys this next week. Um, if you, when you when we start to see dollar stores closing, it doesn't mean that people aren't still needing to buy things. Now, if somebody is just getting by and has to go to a dollar store and buy those, those let's say, cheaper goods, where do they go? How are they then going to pay for their basic needs? If inflation is here to stay, and the dollar stores, the margins are just compressing, five below is the new dollar store. Yep. But think about the effects of that. I think um, those of you guys that haven't seen the, uh, the thread I posted this weekend, uh, Gen Z is screwed. That one is going to give you a real good insight into kind of my age group. That's a real good one. This is, I, I don't like this. This moving up like this is ridiculous. Because the problem is, is it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you see more demand for yen, it just keeps going. Ooh, hold on. Did we just get sharked in the market here? Did this just, yeah, hold on. ES is starting to sell here. Bitcoin coming down. We're... Oh boy, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah, so the... Oh, the DRV is going. That's nice. Yeah, so I'm up like between 2.85 and 3% on the day right now. Yeah, my biddy is looking okay. It's not like crazy, but it is good. The biddy is looking good. So, I mean, if we can start shifting down here... 64, 735, that would get interesting. Mare is getting hit. ES is really getting sharked here. With three micros. Nice. There you go, Venkat. There you go. Good short there. Yeah, so I'm kind of hitting on a, on both sides today. I had the I had the Raytheon to the upside. The Maras that I had going into this week were sitting a little red. Um, but then on that initial pop right at open. Uh, pretty much eliminated the the redness of that trade. It still was slightly red. I mean, the trade was again like size for zero, but I just wanted to take that money back. Um, so that helped with a little bit of the gain for today. And then the uh, the biddy, and I'll tell you guys what the other one is. It's DRV. The other one that I have is DRV. So that's the inverse real estate ETF. I like that. Um, but with those shorts shorts again they're not actual shorts 
Um, I would like to have some upside. It's just this market to me is not looking like it wants to do anything but sell for a little bit. The the real the real wild card here is earnings season. Uh, your Mariput's looking nice so far. Nice, Eddie. Oh, wait. Hold on. That's 10. This is a 15-minute chart. I mean, that might have been on home builder confidence. That could be why DRV is catching a bit here, too. Hold on. Business inventories were right at expectations. Housing market index was right at expectations, too. Yeah, that's weird. I don't really know why that why would be why would be why we would be nuking on this when the data Again, it could be something within it that I just don't see. Bitcoin getting hit there. Oh, wait, no. Eh, I mean, nothing crazy. Yeah, so we're up over 3% on the day now. That's good. That's good, man. Yeah, the DRV is looking good now. You got, I, we got to be a little bit more <clears throat> nimble these days. A little bit more nimble, ladies and gentlemen. If we lose this zone on ES, watch out for this one. Watch out. Is USD, this is still going. Yields are probably ripping. Yep. Wow. Wow. I think this is just selling U.S. bonds going back to Japan right now. That's what I think this is. Bitcoin losing it a little here. Is the dollar ripping as well? How's the dollar ripping? Man? See, that's the one thing that's kind of messing with me. Where's Dixie? I mean, this is also versus, I believe it's six other, six other currencies. But... MES, not ES. Yeah. Uh, you're trying to pass a 50K account. What do you rent for position, recommend for position sizing? Uh, it depends on what it is, Venkat. So if you're on Apex and they're offering a one day to pass and you're just kind of slinging, I mean, you could size it as much as you want and try and get the one day to pass. But if we're trying to be smart long-term traders, I mean, I wouldn't risk uh, more than the, more than like 10 or 15% of the max drawdown. That's, that's usually the name of the game there. ES missed entry by 0.5. From here? That's definitely not this one. It didn't go, it didn't go far enough down. That would be the one that I'm looking for, but I think that's too much risk on it. So that's why I'm not really looking for this one. I'd be looking for this one, but I think this one would have too much risk on it, so I don't think I'd touch it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Oh, and then, yeah, that new prop firm that has, like, the sickest deal ever for you guys. I mean, I can throw that link in here for you guys, too. Uh, My Funded Futures. Where is that? Where is that link? I think it's over here. I'll grab that in here for you guys, too. Boom. There you go. I mean, if Bitcoin can get down here, my alerts aren't on here for some reason, but they're they're definitely on my, oh yeah, we're cranking today. DRV is going. Look at this. So this thing's moving. This thing looks nice. Up above here would be very interesting, 43.19. If yields start spiking and you, you start to see that fear in the real estate space, this thing might catch a big bid, which it is. You're trading MMF right now, up 1,000 at the moment. There you go. Yeah, so this one's good. I've got the BITI. This thing's looking good here as well. I mean, I don't actually have a stop on this thing yet. I just, I just, it's just here. I mean, I just, I just have this on here, but. <coughs> tomorrow i'll do something with it there goes bitcoin sharking this thing should start catching up 796 jeez yeah we're up we're up real good today real good now we're up about four percent on the day 
So I did send you guys the DRV and the BITI in the uh, the Swing Kings watch list as well. That was on there for you. Again, pay attention to pay a premium. You guys are going to get a lot of value, not only from the education that's provided in those uh, in those courses, but the every week watch list there. Uh, where's the tenure? Dude, the tenure is ripping. Oh my God. Where's gold and silver? Here comes Mara lower. Good. Die. Go down. Give me my opportunity. Uh, GLD. Let's take a look at this. GLD is probably. Why is gold down? Let's think about that. Why is gold down today? Could it be, hmm. London session low? Oh, is that the overnight? Is that like the four, two, it's like 1 a.m. to like something like that? I, I, I mean, I don't really mess around with those. Uh, plus the BITI tip for you was useful to Mara. Can't get uh, bitty contracts with your broker. I'm not trading uh, options on BITI. It's a three times levered ETF. I'm not going anywhere near that. Tax day taking profits potentially, but think about it like this though. You're you got to worry about settlement. Like Thursday was the day that you really had to sell by. Which think about what happened on Thursday. Go back to the daily. What happened Thursday? Which doesn't make sense because I think Thursday was the day we ripped. Oh no, Wednesday rip. Thursday death. Wait no. No, Thursday was green. That's strange. Unless it's a bank holiday and you'd have to, I don't know. I don't think it's, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to come up with an explanation that kind of incorporates tax day, but you would have, you would have seen it. Like you could say that th this move down part of this was selling due to taxes. So Bitcoin screwing around, DRV screwing around, everything's screwing around right now. Uh, what is tax day? Uh, I mean, it's the little date that you got to file. Send your seven. Uh, so the swings are out of the conversation now with the market as uncertain as it is. The swings aren't out of the question. We just have to be more nimble with it. Like we're going to trade different things. Remember how I always like to say, um, especially when we talk about it in the, in the videos and, and what I say on here, we want to look for stocks that we know can move big. Well, most of the time it's going to be the growth names. Like, Google, Amazon, Affirm, Robot, all of those types of things. But there are certain instances we have to pay more attention to like macro and things that are happening where then you can kind of move into those uh, those inverse ETFs, which is what I have right now. A bunch of those. I still do have a little bit of the Micron, but I'm not doing anything with that. So up over 3% on the day, 3.25 about right now. That's an amazing start to the week, ladies and gentlemen. That's amazing. What's your rip? Well, uh, of course, here, are you talking about like in terms of the drawdown? We just talked about that. Um, and then this, I mean, your risk only is your evaluation fee. Or a, or a funny tax avoider. Yeah. No, I did. I, I mean, tax season for me this year was nice. Which is shocking. I was shocked. Cause there was like a dull, I like did something double by accident. Cause my account just, I don't think he got, he just didn't under, he, he, I think it, I didn't make it clear. So I ended up paying a lot more than I needed to. Like a lot more. <laughs> so, you know, what feels illegal, but isn't that <laughs> like right there. Ooh, let's see. Uh, did anyone take the day trade on ES? The day trade that I want on ES. Where are you guys going from here? Are you guys going from here? Because I, I would be looking at this. It's just I think the risk is too big. But yeah, I mean, you got that bounce. So what do you need to get to? Like, 
Right, I could see why you're doing it from here. I could see that. You're short? Well, you were short from up here, buddy. You had a nasty short on it. I mean, what is this a mastermind setup or no? Nah, that's sort of in here, but nothing crazy. Oh, your chart shows it missed it by half a point. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what somebody said earlier that it missed it by half a point. So you needed to come down like literally right here. I mean, that's the thing with the uh the day trading mastery course strategy. Like sometimes you'll get missed by like a tick. But then you'll be able to hit the trade the ones that do this. Like that one that you guys all saw in the video. I mean, that video I think is about to have like a hundred thousand views now on Instagram. Thank you guys. Somebody really big in the trading space followed me as well. Right here. Uh yesterday. Especially on like the the Instagram stuff, and that's pretty cool. I actually have a funny I mean, I've never talked to the guy, but I have a funny story about one of his cars. Like he like he 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 bought something before somebody that I know wanted to buy it. The person that I know was like, Oh, I wish I got it. And I sent him a picture of who had it. He was like, he was like, I got beat. I was like, Yeah, man. <laughs> like you got to be quicker than that. Let's see. No, it wasn't. It wasn't Gabe. It wasn't Gabe. The Bugatti. It wasn't the Bugatti. It was the. It was the Senna, actually. That car, that car looks sick. Oh, we're 15 likes away from 100. Thank you, team. Hopefully, all you new people in here are learning some stuff. I think, um, I mean, I know some of the, uh, again, some of the other things that I have for you guys, especially the courses, a um, little, bit, little bit more expensive for some of you. I mean, I can charge a lot more for them. I choose not to. Um, the mastermind, things like that, but that new, uh, that new, like, I don't want to call it a newsletter. I kind of want to call it like VIX insights or something. Cause that's basically what it is. It's, it's research reports that I'm preparing for all of you. Uh, I'm going to try to get about like five or six of them out a month. Um, and really, really get your guys' learning to a whole new level. So that's going to be something that I want everybody to be able to have access to. Um, so I'm going to try to get that out for you guys on Sunday. If you guys want to be one of the first to do that, I mean, all of you guys that are already in the courses are going to get that email. Um, but, uh, it's going to be on the free newsletter as well, which also is going to continue for at least a, a little while longer. Um, that free newsletter is still going to be around. Uh, that's on short, the info. The one from this past week, I'm real good. Ralph, I'm, I'm interested like the gold move. I'm surprised that gold is down today again. Ten year holding about four six. Yeah. Uh, are you still gonna be sending them out when you step down from live streaming? Yes, but I don't know if I need to step down from live streaming. We should probably should call it Vix minutes. We we might be able to continue streaming. I don't know yet. We have to look. I, I have to see. That's fifty fifty. Hey three twenty k auction off. I heard a story of a a Porsche older Porsche that was bought for thirty thousand was sold for i think like 40 and then uh and then years later it was 90 100 probably more now which gold ticker moves the quickest if i want exposure to gold i mean i'll just trade gld for silver i mean you guys saw the uh the like for if i want to trade silver i'll trade sld um those premiums and those contracts moved very nicely that was great i mean the height of the that position that you guys saw on social media was what 600 but again i wanted to make it clear to everybody i wasn't selling at 600 i ended up selling the rest of it for about 535 percent uh which is still really good i'll take that all day long DRV still holding on up there, about 42. I like that. 
Any bond auctions today? I don't think so. There might be, though. Even gold is an equity in this world now. I personally think inflation hedging <coughs> is more relevant now than it was in the past. Vic Sites. That, could, that would be a good name for it. Uh, they went crazy. We had an 88 uh, turbo. We bought for 225. Sold a year later at auction for 275. Thought we were smart. Three years later, it was worth what? Well, then you would well you would have been smart. I'm um, if you're, are you saying 1.75 million? Are you? Yeah, I mean, absolutely great start to the week, guys. Great start to the week. I don't know how much I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna. If I can, I'll scale some Viddy or, or DRV later. I, I do want a little upside exposure because there are some charts that still look good. I want to see actually how uh, Facebook is looking here. And then I want to take a look at the chips. So I'll go back and look at Micron. Oh, oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, I misread that. 22, 27, 175. Oh, my God, Daniel. Yeah, Facebook still looks great to me. I like this. You got, what, 30 minutes left on this hourly candle there, too? Tesla finally found some support. Uh, what about Apple? I want to take a look at Apple today, too. Then I want to take a look at the chips. So let's, all right, so keep somebody, if I forget, somehow if I get distracted, remind, Tesla just still looks horrendous to me. Um, app, Tesla, Apple. It's been a while since you saw the Frozen song. Can you sing it for Mara? What 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 was the Frozen song? What was that for? Up 5% on the port. Thank you STV and Ambitious Traders. There you go, my man. Love that. Love that, man. All right, Apple. You want to play? I'll play with you. I'll play. Oh, they got earnings coming up. Let it go. Oh, the let it go part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it goes down. All right. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. Ambitious traders, though, up 5% on the day. That's awesome. Um, again, you guys all have access to the 50% off deal on the uh, on the courses there. So you guys want to give yourselves that, that actual real solid education. You want to take advantage of these moves in the market. There you go. Uh, so many people like to trade with their own discretion. Again, I always say this, and I think this is the best way to operate in the market. All Your only job is to be a steward of your system. Once you understand the system and what you can expect to generate, again, obviously, with some standard deviation over time, uh, makes it a lot easier to be a market participant every single day. Um, what was the other one? The chips. We got to take a look at the chips. Uh, AMD, how are we looking here? I'm probably going to cry. Yep. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. I mean, that's not great, but that would be an interesting daily candle if this thing flipped. Uh, Micron, this thing's probably selling. It's holding that 10. I, I Micron is still going to be a top watch for me this week. What I will probably do is use this 125.86 uh, as an alert to really come in and start taking a deeper look into that thing there. Uh, never watched the original Matrix movie and Eagle Eye in the same weekend. Makes you buy, want to buy every chip stock. Yeah, I bet it does. Uh, Biddy is looking for eight there. That's nice. That's nice. So those shares are up over 3% now. The DRV is looking good. Yeah, We're looking great, guys. And remember what I've been talking about over the last few weeks. It's those rotations and where we need to go. I mean, sometimes those rotations are going to be in the inverse levered ETFs. So we're going to wait and see what happens with that. Micron holding on nicely for what I like to look at. Here comes Bitcoin lower. Watch and see if Biddy can get over eight. If that happens, woo, that'll be fun. Ralph, I hope they do a uh, like a voice uh, voice chat today. I'd love to hop in there for a little bit while I'm working through the uh, some of the threads. And oh, guys, we have a big week with the mastermind this week too. Oh boy, oh boy, we've got one of the biggest mastermind weeks here. Oh boy, that's gonna be real fun. Me too. 
Yeah, I hope they do. Because I, I want to talk about, I really want to talk about the USD JPY stuff and, uh, and yields. DGEN to your account risk rebuilding double digit percentage gains the last four days today, over 30% on cash. DGEN, but listening to you, there you go. Oh, Biddy, yeah, Biddy is the short Bitcoin ETF, it's inverse. So, dude, we're almost up 4% today. I mean, we kind of hit it on both sides. The Raytheon going up. I mean, I sold, I'm pretty sure, I'd have to look and do the math, but I sold those at like just under 100% on the, on like basically two thirds of the position. It probably wasn't exactly two thirds, but something like that. And then, um, and then sold the rest of them for like 50%. Now we're just waiting around. ES screwing around. You included? Oh, thanks, Ralph. I appreciate that. Well, the thing is, too, is remember, I want to start stepping up my stuff, too. What? That's one of the reasons why. LG. Oh, I remember. LG, this is your time to shine, buddy. I know you love Lockheed, buddy. Um. Yeah, thanks, Ralph. I mean, I want to step up everything too, which is why I'm offering that. Uh, that I'm gonna do that new like newsletter write up subscription for you guys. And again, it's gonna be like 10, 15 bucks a month. I want it to. I want everybody to be able to have access. Everybody that wants to have access to it, you will be able to. So. And again, you guys want a little bit of a taste of, of what we're going to be talking about in there? Go uh, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, Short the Vix one We post a really, or I, I don't even know why I say we. I uh, posted a really good thread, I think, this past weekend, especially looking at uh, looking at my generation and the different types of, like, struggles that, that what I see people dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Share 1% of your gains with me. How about I share 100% of my knowledge with you? How about that? How about that? That's worth way more than anything. How about that? Uh, what are yields doing? I backed off a little. USD JPY pulling back a little. You jumped on some GLD up 23%. Well, guys, remember... Every single thing that you do in the market needs to has a have a very, very specific, yeah, it came down a little, uh, very specific reason as to why you're doing what you're doing. I never take a trade unless I know what the system and, and what is actually happening. That's actually a darn good deal. Oh, thanks, guys. I, like, again, I'm not, you guys know me. It's uh, anybody that has access to it or uh, anybody that wants to have access to it will be able to. He says because we can access his lizard hive mind now. Let's see. Uh, if you read books, Ready Aim Fire, it's a good read. He made a bunch of money uh, financial newsletters. Maybe it was a clear. Oh, cool. I mean, again, it's I'm going to be spending a lot of time doing these for you guys, so it has to, to cost something. I'm not going to do it for free. Like I will probably spend like two or three hours per day. You're in a nice day trade right now on ES. There you go, Michael. Where are you? Are you short side? This was nice up here coming up to the zone. What were we saying here? I was saying something. Oh, yeah. I mean, my my newsletter that I have for you right now that's out there for free, it costs me a bunch of money every single month to do it because there's like 5,000, 6,000 people on it, and I keep having to like to get a bigger plan. Like we have That, that one's going to stay around though for a while. Still taking squatter application as we sleep over? No. How about we don't do that? Uh, Biddy looking for that eight again. You never get it. Well, that's the, see, that's what we're going to solve on this one too. So I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Like there's no way for me, like some of the, and the thing is, is only out of like the 5,000 emails I send every weekend, only 20 of them bounce. So if you're one of those 20, I, you might want to go in with a different email, but with this thing, there's, it's the, it's going to be within the platform that we already have. So it's going to be like a posted uh, PDF that you guys can then go through and read. 
So it's th we're not going to have any issues with the like the emails and stuff like that. Because I, I I wanted to make sure that obviously if you guys are going to come in and, and want it, I, I, like I don't want you guys to not have it. And it's not something that I can go in and just fix. Like if you're like, oh, I don't get the email. It's like to me on my data, it looks like everybody gets the email. Or the vast majority of everybody gets the email. So Bitcoin coming down. I would love to see Biddy over eight. That'd be nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. DRV. DRV with a little move. There we go. There we go. We're getting up to that level here. 4319. I don't know. This thing moves weird. I like this. We'll see what happens. I mean, this one from this past weekend was, I think, really good. Those of you guys who read it, I mean, you got a nice little, nice little insight into what we're what we got going on this week. Yeah, let's see, Bitcoin. If you get down to here, I mean, let me see if it lets me create an alert here. Is my trading view going to be annoying? Oh, see, there, my alerts are back now. Yeah, I mean, we don't need this one. I don't really. I want that. So that's knifing. If it breaks that low, Biddy's going to be over eight. DRV is looking solid here. They're looking good, man. I think we're up over 4% on the day now. Yep. Pay attention to pay a premium, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try to get another thread out for you guys today, though. I've got a couple. Uh, there's a commercial real estate one that I really want to make. Uh, extend and pretend. That one we absolutely have to talk about because people are freaking out about the commercial real estate space and, and are like, oh my God, they should be taking these write downs and all that stuff. But you got to realize when you play at that high level in, in, uh, in banking and lending, you have a lot more, um, a lot more leeway in what you can do. I kind of want to throw, I mean, I don't really need more alerts on Bitcoin. I don't really care. SLV is getting a pop. Uh, didn't see the DRV. That's a pretty one. Yeah, that was on the uh, the watch list that I sent to you guys uh, yesterday. Uh, you started trading, uh, learning to trade recently. What's your advice for you to get uh, be able to get somewhere? Uh, I have a couple. One, every th single thing that you do in the market has to have a specific reason. Um, and I want you to make sure that you're focusing on systems over discretion. You should never take a trade in the market where the reason for taking the trade starts with, I think. Never. Never. So what that enables you to do, and, and this is kind of how I teach everything, is, is and that's why I give you guys, and I go through and show you guys 10 months of following that uh, trading strategy and what happens. And I don't know what's in it. I don't know. Like if that, if that data, I know the data is good because I know the strategy, but I don't know how good it was going to be. But if you can understand over a longer time horizon what certain strategies and what certain ways of thinking and operating in the market are going to enable you to do, it makes it much more, it makes it almost impossible for you to make those short-term emotional and risk management mistakes because then you can realize the big picture that your only job is to be a steward of your system. That's it. Uh, with the volatility in the market and the majority of retail losing cash, how does that affect Hood? Um... Hood has a lot more ways of generating rep. Well, think about it. They would be making a boatload of money. Higher trading volumes is going to benefit Hood. They now have the credit card. Uh, they're basically be booking everybody's Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin ends up roaring back to the upside, I mean, they're going to have like a bigger balance sheet from that. Um, but that's why I teach things in the way that I do. Um, so that everybody can learn them. Like, it's not like you're, you have to gain some sort of random imaginary skill of like, ooh, I see this in the market right now. You don't. You don't. Everybody can do what I do. Absolutely. Each and every one of you guys can do this. Obviously, I'll guide you with the swings and say, this is what I'm looking at for this week. So put, put, point you guys in the right direction. But the best thing I've ever seen out of you guys, Bitcoin's selling hard here. Uh, one of the best things I've ever seen is you guys sending me tickers that either you've identified or you've made money on that I didn't see. That's my favorite thing. I don't want you guys ever to feel dependent on me. I'm just your tour guide. That's all I am. I'm just your tour guide. What was I going to look at over here? 
Oh, uh, BITI is getting up there. It's trying to crack not, uh, eight right now. Yeah, up, up real good today. Up real good today. All right, guys, I got to grab water really quickly. We are 11 likes away from 100. Thank you, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you guys coming to these streams. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back. That Bitcoin alert might hit. Biddy is not over eight yet, but if it breaks that level, it probably will be. All right, we're back. Tour guide to the market, but not the sleepover? Oh, come on, bro. That's weird. <laughs> come on, man. That's weird. Hood credit card was vital to its stability. I think they're going to do very well with that. I think Robin Hood's credit card, I think they're going to do very well with that. DRV's looking good. So there's eight on Biddy. Or it flashed it. I mean, those shares are up almost 4%. That's good. Here we go. Thoughts on Palo Alto. Maybe going to sell off again. Let's actually take a look at that. Let's take a look here at Palo Alto. Yeah, I, I mean, this is not... You potentially you had a little potential for a setup here, but again, after it invalidated the 10, I'm not really going to look at this. Yeah, it easily could have some more downside. The, uh, the risk is a little weird. I probably wouldn't be touching that. So this is not going to really fit what I like to look at a lot of the time. Um, not really. for The premiums are going to be insane on it. This is the Nancy Pelosi hyped. Nancy Pelosi is getting hammered on this trade. Uh, not ready yet? Yeah. Have to leave now. Have a great start of the week. Caesar, you too, my man. We're cranking today, man. We are cranking today. What a day so far. It's getting there. You shift that trend, you get that hourly close down below, Bitcoin could easily start going, bye-bye. And then we get to make some more money. I kind of want to see that thing go to like nine. Biddy, that'd be great. If Biddy went to nine, I'd be really happy. <laughs> I don't know. It would take a lot. Like you'd have to really get down to like here in order to even sniff that sub 60 K DraftKings. Holy straw. I haven't taken a look at that DraftKings in a while. Yeah, that's probably, let's look at the weekly. This was great. I mean that DraftKings trade, what was that? Or no, that was like the 1500 percenter on DraftKings. I think I sold that for 1,150% though. I think that was the one Bitcoin just did it. Bitcoin just hit. So you're shifting that low here. Biddy, 802. ES getting hammered. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, Biddy's over eight. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I like this. I like this so far. What a start. What a freaking start, man. Smooth short on ES, 80 points. You didn't hit 80 points on ES, dude. It would be impossible if you'd hit 80 points on 80 ticks. Regardless of the trades, uh, what do you mean? If this thing gets going, <laughs> ticks, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm trying not to, yeah. Talk about, I don't know why people talk about in ticks. I don't, I don't get that. It t- it's fine. I mean, you can if you want to. Like, well, I'll get it, but I just, I talk about things in points. Yeah, 20 points is nasty, dude. That's 200% on an ES. That's crazy. Great for you, Boyd Departure. That's awesome. I mean, now with the way that I have everything set up, they want to they wanna send this market lower. By all means. By all means, let this thing go. You just went long on NQ. Why? MNQ? That's not, I mean, good for you. I hope it works. It's just remember, everything that I do in the market is so systems driven. Regardless of the trades, what do you say about the word Israel? My thoughts on conflict, in my own personal opinions, don't matter. I'm here to help you guys understand the actual implications of conflict. My opinions don't matter. That's not what we're here to do. We're not like a political commentary show. Does that make sense? Like, it's just not. It's not what I'm here to do. Because you're playing, the reason why is that you're, you're effectively engaging in behavior that just by the very debate of it, sure, you can debate all you want, but nobody's ever going to get to the core of the issue of like, of let's just talk about it like this, of like what's really like going on with how it affects and what the United States is trying to do with their debt. The movement of the dollar and what's going on with the United States debt right now is is the most important. NQ, no, I think he went long. He went long NQ. And that, and I say this a lot too. When you see, because that issue is very, people are going to have very strong opinions on either side. It it has to do with any issue though. Most issues too, people are going to talk about. Biddy is going there a little. And they're, and they're not going to understand the core of why the issues are actually happening. Think about this one. Let's talk about like income inequality in the United States and then how it, how it actually manifests itself into everyday like social behaviors. Well, you're going to see more unrest. You're going to see people on the right get um, upset about some reactions. You're going to see people on the left get upset about this. You're going to see all sorts of nonsense. But it's not actually solving any problems with the, with their, the way that they're debating it. It never will. Because they're not actually talking about the real issue. If you didn't, okay, think about it like this. If you didn't have very high levels of affl- inflation and the, the let's call it the working class right now struggling very significantly, we probably wouldn't be seeing a lot of the, a lot of the crazy issues that we have. You just probably wouldn't. When you hurt people's wallets and their day-to-day uh, living and their overall quality of life, it, it, it doesn't bode well for, for society as a whole. So, like, we can debate, like, ooh, what about this issue? What about this? And it's like, okay, fine. But it's almost like you're just playing a, a silly game that you're not going to be able to find a solution for. Like, why do it? It doesn't make sense. Biddy really going there. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm up, like, 4.5% on the day now. Nailed the Raytheon. Uh, trimmed the Microns. Those are in the red. Uh, but the Biddies and the DRVs are looking great. So the shares that I have on Biddy are up about four ish percent, little more, four point. It's flickering, but that was good. Um, the DRVs are looking good, looking good across the board, team. So again, I mean, you guys have access to to all of that education there. The fifty percent off deal. We're gonna have that uh that that newsletter ish, the VIX Insights. So that's what I want to call it. I think VIX Insights. Five likes away from 100. Thank you, team. All right. Let's see what we got here. I have so much stuff I got to do today, I think. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. I don't know. Oh, I do have some things I got to do. Where's the ES? Mm, flickering. Flickering. Where are yields? 
Vix ticks. Nah, I can't call it that. <laughs> Sorry. Cause it's not, it's not, again, it's not, it's not like, 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 yeah, we are, I am going to have write-ups on like, like fundamental analysis on different companies. Like one of them is going to be uh, Philip Morris. Uh, one of the first ones that I want to do a write-up on with you guys is going to be Philip Morris. There was something very, very, very interesting happening with that company that I think people need to be aware of. Not, I don't have a position in it. Maybe I will at some point, maybe I won't, but it's, I want to be able to draw your guys' attention to a lot of things and increase everybody's learning. And obviously I want it to be accessible to everybody as well. So this Sunday, I'm really going to try to have that out for you guys. Cause I love, dude, I love writing these things for you guys. I love it. PM is really interesting. We've been ahead of that yet. Yeah, well, the other thing is remember, so the 40% number of where that revenue comes from, the other part of it is, all right, well, we have to figure Well, then I have to go through and talk about the other 60% of the revenue. So I've just gone through the first part of it, the, the one that I'm the most interested in, but not, not the other 60%, because again, I mean, yeah, the 40% of it can grow very significantly, but that other 60% is probably the core business. So you got to look at that as well. We have different reasons. Yeah. But it's things like that. Like the, like the, the really it's, it's, I'm going to try to make this as, as the most professional research as it possibly can. Biddy still holding above eight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bitcoin. Uh oh. That's nice. That's nice. I like it. Uh, 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 yeah, looking good. Yeah, awesome start to the week. Can't really ask for much more than that. Slender rip. Slender rip, ladies and gentlemen. Coinbase fed your family today. Puts, there you go. I mean, I would assume that thing is getting hammered. I mean, this is going to pop up on the weekly. That actually looks interesting on the weekly to me. Daily as well, but weekly looks a little bit more enticing. And with the amount of time that it would take Coinbase to actually kind of finalize this retest on the on the weekly would probably be post having. Which is also lining up with exactly what I'm saying on Mara. So that'll be something to keep a lookout for. Uh, might be done trading this week until Wednesday. Yeah, we, the weekly looks interesting on it. I just, obviously, I would want it. I need this. I need the 10 to catch up. We need a lot more things out of this chart for me to be interested. Q's looking sketchy. Uh, ES is looking sketchy, too. Bitcoin, I think, is bouncing a little. DRV coming back up. It'd be wild if this thing got up to 43.20 today. That'd be wild. Yeah. All right. Three likes away from 100. There you guys go. Yeah, and we're going to be extending the streams every day now until 11 as well. I know you guys, I think you guys really enjoy the streams. Um... I'm fine with going half hour longer every single day with you until 11. Remember, those of you guys that are new, I'm live every day, 9 a.m. If it's CPI day, though, I usually get on a little earlier. All right, cool. Yeah, I saw that message, Ralph. I'll, that'd be nice. I mean, I'd love to go in there. I mean, I, I'll probably just go look into it on my own too because that's the one thing i really want to talk about today is the uh, the, uh yields and usd jpy it's not tomorrow that's a terrible visual but guys this is why we can't have nice things you guys make comments like this you really enjoy the streams i would not be spending time listening if i uh needed to see about yeah thank you ralph i appreciate that buddy Biddy new highs 807. DRV is kind of hanging out at that 4260 area. If it can break there, I might get fun. Could I still lose on it? Yeah. Is it likely? Mm, depends with earnings season. <laughs> Guys, come on now. This is why we can't have nice things. 
Uh, American pilots, uh, American Airlines pilots warned by union about safety concerns. I think Bitcoin's trying to move back up here. Is it? Oh, uh, just kidding. I can't tell. Like the there's too many numbers here. <laughs> like I can't I can't really tell where it's going if I just look at the top. With these, I can. I know where they are. Like 805. Very easy to know. But if it's like six four four nine one five, like I just I'm not gonna be quick enough to do that. SB looks like a good tennis player. I am a good tennis player. I don't play ever. I learned to play sarcastically as a child. Not really. I did like it. I wish I could play more though. I wanted to join like a tennis club around here, meet some people. What do I think of gold right now? Gold's interesting. Gold, I think I gold, I think it needs to it needs to relax a little bit. Uh and then over the coming weeks, depending on uh, obviously what we see happen with earnings season, PCE data, um, I think you could get that next leg up. Uh if you did not capitalize on the gold, silver, oil movements that have happened over the last month, month and a half. Uh, obviously, I mean, it wouldn't make sense to go chasing them now, but I think there definitely is still more opportunity, uh, in those charts. They just need to, that's why, I mean, I sold my SLVs, uh, for 500 something percent on, uh, Friday, uh, and those contracts actually expired in May, like expire in May. So I have another month of time on, or I did have another month of time on those, but I just wanted to book those gains, especially as it started to fail, uh, on Friday. So the height of those, I only saw them up in the 600% range. Uh, I ditched it for five, 535%. And then, which I, I, I told you guys that about on Twitter and Instagram and all of that. But, um, if I hadn't, I mean, that would have came down very significantly. Can't walk and down up the stairs. Yeah. My feet are too big. I can't do it. You guys look at me on the stream here. Uh, most people think I'm a lot shorter than I am. I mean, I'm not that tall. I'm o- I'm only like six, two. It's not like we had a couple of friends that we went out with this weekend though, that are like, six five six six and they're all huge and i was like but like you guys are making me feel short it was funny uh unh jj uh earnings tomorrow pre-market yeah, UNH really sold off due to their, I believe it was the Department of Justice investigation. Um, now, depending on what their earnings looks like in their current valuation, they might actually be able to have a slight B or even come in at expectations and pop. But again, those big healthcare names, I try to stay away from them a little bit. Uh, they, they're tough to get right. Same thing with Amazon. Amazon's a tough one to get right. DRV new highs, or yeah, DRV new highs here. Here we go. Look at us, ladies and gentlemen. Look at us. Just crushing it. Yep. So DRV and BITI were two of the names on the on the watch list I sent to you guys this week. Sophomore high school, D was a monster. Well, you guys, I mean, I don't know if I ever told you guys about this one, though. I grew really late. So I was uh, I was little for a while. And then boom. I told you guys the moon boot story where I had to wear both boots on my feet, walk around in high school that way. That's def- That's character building right there. You got to wear two ankle boots on your feet going to high school as a freshman. Yeah, that's you want to build some character. Uh, Biddy going up. I think Bitcoin's losing it here. Yeah, there we go. The power of those watch lists, man. They are pretty good. DRV, though, is one. I mean, the biddies are up a lot more, but... I do want to see DRV over 43 today. Will it get there? I don't know. But it could. 42.77. There we go. Biddy, 8.06. 8.07. Got to protect those ankles. Yeah. You do. It was more so I have extra bones in my feet. And when my feet grew, it that did not feel good. So <laughs> it's a rough one. I can't take play tennis like a pro either. Like I'm good, but 
I'm not like, yes, coming down. Are they gonna, are they, yeah, there goes DRV a little. I want them to pump these these inverse ETS a little more. Like, get them. Oh, uh, there's a little lag on these. All right, guys. It is 11 in the morning. That is going to wrap up the stream for today. I mean, what an absolutely epic start to the week. Um, again, we have that that awesome new uh, uh, the VIX Insights potentially coming. I'm going to really try to get that uh, that sign up area out for you guys on Sunday. Then we're going to start kind of the the following week. That is going to be one of the most value packed things that I do for you guys here. Um, I'm so excited to get started with that. Then uh, again, for those of you guys that want the uh, the existing 50 percent off deal to the day trading mastery course and the Swing Kings course. There you guys go. I mean, you guys have seen the, the watch list from this week printing again. Um, you guys saw the day trade from it last week. I mean, granted, there was another stop out that I had. But again, the risk to reward on those is like when you hit double TPs, it's like one to five, one to seven. I mean, I, we don't have to talk about it. You guys know how nuts they are. When you guys hop in, you can't unsee it. So team, I will see you guys later. Oh, this is the other thing I forgot to mention. When you guys hop into those educational curriculums and you guys have any questions about anything ever, just shoot me a message. And I'm always around answering your guys' questions. So team, I'll see you guys later.